Let's review chemical equilibrium. For a reaction, red plus blue yields green plus yellow. Under the following sets of initial conditions, can equilibrium possibly be attained? At equilibrium, we are going to have some amount of each of the substances. Some red, some blue, some green, some yellow. Is it possible to reach such a state given these initial sets of conditions? For the first case, when you already have some amount of each, that can certainly happen. For the second case, we're starting with only red and only blue. From the reaction equation, we can see that if we start with some red and some blue, we can make green and we can make yellow. So yes, we can reach equilibrium starting with just red and blue. Suppose we start with just the reactant red. Can we reach equilibrium? And the answer is no, because remember that at equilibrium we need some green and some yellow, and we can't make any green or yellow without any blue to go along with the red that we already have. How about this next case? We're going to start with some red, some green, and some yellow. The only thing that's missing is some blue, and we could make some blue because we have green and yellow. This reaction can run backwards to produce some blue, so that is a case where we could also reach equilibrium. How about this last case? If we start with blue and yellow, can we reach equilibrium? And the answer is no, because we can't get red and we can't get green starting with just blue and just yellow. The law of mass action is the observation that the rate of a chemical reaction is proportional to the product of the amounts of substances on one side of a chemical equation raised to the power of their coefficients. That might not make any sense at this time, but it will very shortly. The law of mass action is the muscle behind what we call an equilibrium constant expression. For this equilibrium system, you can see we've got two reactants, A and B. They have certain coefficients for the balanced equation. Then we've got two products, P and Q, also with coefficients such that the equation is balanced. The law of mass action says that an equilibrium constant, K, is given by this equation here. The amount of product P raised to the power of its coefficient times the amount of product Q raised to the power of its coefficient divided by the amount of reactant A raised to the power of its coefficient and also divided by the amount of reactant B raised to the power of its coefficient. In other words, an equilibrium constant in general is written products raised to the powers of their coefficients over reactants raised to the power of their coefficients. When the amounts are given in terms of concentration, i.e. molarity, we write this equilibrium constant. We call it K sub C because it's concentration or molarity. The square brackets mean molarity. So we have molarity of P raised to the power of its coefficient and so on. Products over reactants. For a gaseous system, which we don't measure often with molarity, but more often with pressures of gases, there's a similar expression. But instead of using the concentrations of each substance, we use the partial pressures. Whenever you are calculating a Kp value, it's wise for all of your pressures to be in atmospheres. So just keep that in mind. So to review, any K value is called an equilibrium constant, and the equilibrium constant expression is the thing in the yellow double box. Let's go back to this sort of idea that we talked about earlier in this lesson. Red and blue reacting to form green and yellow. And we had decided that, yes, equilibrium could be reached if we started with these sets of 
reactants and products. If we were to write a Kc expression for this, we would write concentration of green times concentration of yellow divided by concentration of red and divided by concentration of blue. The coefficients are all 1 in our equation, so we haven't raised any of these concentrations to any particular power. And whenever equilibrium is reached, the amounts of reactants and products are such that you always get the same value of K. Let's take a few instances. This table shows three different cases where we've reached equilibrium. We've given the equilibrium concentrations of each of these four substances. For case one, what would be the value of K? We always take, if you look at the top middle of the screen here, to calculate K in this example, we're going to take the concentration of green times the concentration of yellow divided by that of red divided by that of blue. So if we go down to our table here, the concentration of green is 0.5, concentration of yellow is 1, so the numerator is equal to 0 0.5, 0 0.5 times 1, divided by 2 and divided by 0.5. What does that come out to? Well, we've got on the top, we've got 0.5 divided by 1, so that's going to be 0.5. If we took a different case, let's look at those equilibrium concentrations. The numerator would be 0.25 times 2, which is 0.5, and then we have to divide by the product of the red and the blue, which is 1. 0.5 divided by 1 is 0.5. And if we look at the third case, 3 times 0.33, that's the numerator. Green and yellow are in the numerator, so that's 1. And in the denominator, we have this product, which is 2. 1 divided by 2, 0.5. We've now changed our idea slightly of equilibrium, which says that as long as we have amounts of reactants and products at equilibrium that give us a particular value of K at a given temperature, that value of K is always going to be the same. The amounts of reactants and products might be slightly different, as you can see in the three cases that I've shown here on this screen, but the value of K that we calculate will be the same.